Today, we got to talk about Rocco Spindler, who has committed to Notre Dame. And all that's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You got to help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, Ken folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time. Today, we got to talk about Rocco Spindler, six foot five, 315 pound offensive tackle that has committed to play at Notre Dame. He is a top 50 recruit in the 2021 recruiting class, according to the 247 Sports Composite. And he is one hell of a legacy at, well, not at Notre Dame, but his father played in the NFL. And he's really, really good in the NFL. Third round draft pick, 62nd overall, played for like 10 years in the league, and was an All-American at Pitt. Now, Pitt didn't really factor into this, but neither did Michigan. And that's a big deal for me because he's coming out of Clark's, Clarkson, Michigan, which is where Garrett Dillinger comes out of. And by the way, they play on the same team. So that's two of the best offensive tackles in this class that play for Clarkson. My God, no wonder they were so good. But that means that Jim Harbaugh missed on Damon Payne, missed on Rocco Spindler, missed on Garrett Dellinger. All three of those dudes are from his home state. What are you doing, Jim Harbaugh? Meanwhile, Spindler is every bit the dude that you expect him to be. Alan Treu actually has this breakdown, comparing him to Zach Martin. Wow. Does not carry a lot of bad weight. Naturally stocky. Could play offensive or defensive line in college. Has played varsity against strong competition since his freshman season. Will come into college ready to work and compete at that level. Plays tough and aggressive, has a wrestling background, and that shows in his strength and ability to use his leverage. A good athlete who can pull and make blocks in space on offense and tracks plays down on defense, was able to see him at the Under Armour Future 50 and in workout settings, is not a shorts and t-shirts ballerina, but did well at the UA against good competition. Competitiveness, technique, and toughness Keep him at a national level, even if other offensive linemen ranked in the same range may test or camp better. Has all the needed qualities to be an impact player in college and potentially early impact player. Possesses an early round NFL draft ceiling. This means that they're getting a guy that can play football. That's what that evaluation means to me and when you compare someone to Zach Martin you're also comparing him to one of the best offensive linemen in football and a guy that the Dallas Cowboys my Dallas Cowboys had to make and go get and I could totally see why Notre Dame really wanted but I also can't see why Michigan didn't try to make a really just a better push to try to win this kiddo because when you look at how the offensive tackle recruiting has gone in this class it's been really great JC Latham five star is committed to Alabama I mentioned Dellinger and LSU. Tristan Lay is down to Clemson, LSU, Alabama, Oklahoma, and Ohio State. Ohio State already has the number one offensive guard in the country in Donovan Edwards. They might be able to add a guy like Lay. We'll see after losing out on Latham. But they have Ben Chrisman. You, you look around and you're seeing great offensive tackles over the backbone of every good college football team and really these classes. So like when you look at Tommy Brockemeyer, and James Brockemeyer committing to Alabama, you get a better sense of that. And really, offensive tackle is not a position that folks are going to give a whole hell of a lot of thought to, but they should because when you see the best offensive tackles in football, they're usually playing on the best teams in football. Alex Leatherwood is, is an example of this. He's playing at Alabama. In 2017, Oklahoma had what I thought was the best offensive line in all of football. And you look at the guys that were on it, Drew Samia, Ben Powers, Orlando Brown, Bobby Evans, all guys that got drafted, right? And then the next year, 2018, Bill Biedenboe's offensive line was the Joe Moore Award-winning offensive line and a playoff team. LSU last year, the Joe Moore Award-winning offensive line, they won a national championship. So knowing what Notre Dame has been able to do in the past on the offensive line, you really want to see them put it together with their running backs and perhaps even with the defense. I understand that Clark Lee's defense is getting better and everybody – who's in on the Fighting Irish, is in on Kyle Hamilton and knows what they've been able to do at the corner positions with Alohi Gilman and Julian Love to say nothing of what they got coming in. But you need to be able to bring in guys like Spindler that can actually pay the way for guys like 
Chris Tyree, who has 4-3 speed. And I expect to really help them at that running back position that just hasn't been the best. And when you look at what they've been able to do offensively and what the quarterback position has been and the changes that they've had on the def- uh, excuse me, at offensive coordinator, you expect Brian Kelly to try to put something together. But I wasn't really... I wasn't ready to to think of Notre Dame as not being able to be a place that could put together a really good running team. But when you think about what they had been in the past, yeah, they haven't been, right? You're talking about Ian Book having to do most of this by himself. And perhaps with a few wide receivers here and there, but you need to be able to run the ball, especially if you're going to do this barnstorming kind of scheduling that Notre Dame likes to do. Now they're going to play a conference-only schedule in 2020. But normally, they got USC on the schedule, right? Normally, they get to go and play a big-time SEC team like Arkansas. I say big-time because of the following and whatnot. So you want to be able to run the ball against these great defenses that you're going to see, and you're going to have to be able to impose your will on other folks. That said, two years ago, Notre Dame made the college football playoff, so let's, let me not act like they're not good. It's just they're not as good as I think they should be which is basically what I've been saying about Texas, Michigan, and to a degree, Oklahoma for some time. But Spindler is going to help change that. And I think that he's going to actually outkick this second or third round draft selection because he does have the ability to move inside at the next level. And I think that with his training, he's going to get that much better. And knowing what his pedigree is, with Mark Spindler being that dude, I would expect him to be next. That's I think that's a given, or at least or at least be better than this ranking, except, you know, I'm looking at Mark Spindler's resume here, man. Good God. 1986 USA Today High School, Defensive Player of the Year, Freshman All-American, Second Team, All-American, Third Round Pick, Detroit Lions in 1990, playing the NFL till 98 with the Jets and the Lions. Knowing that that's who raised this kid, expect good things. And by the way, Jim Harbaugh, what are you doing? I mean, we've been asking this question, but here in the last few five, four or five days, it's been nothing but Jim Harbaugh dunking. Like, we, we've been th- tossed these things to just dunk on Harbaugh because he won't take his cleats off in somebody's house because he just stopped recruiting Damon Payne. And now, because he can't get the top offensive tackles or defensive tackles in his very own state. Yikes. However, he has been able to put together nine and ten win seasons And maybe that's just good enough at Michigan. But it doesn't seem like it's good enough at Notre Dame. And that's why Rocco Spindler is going there and not elsewhere. All right, that's it for me. Deuces.